Hi, everyone. I am Colleen Wreckers. I am a transformational leadership coach with uh, Inside Out Institute. I'm a life and health wellness coach, an integrative health practitioner, global entrepreneur, and author. And I am so excited today to have a dear friend of mine, Malene Eckel. I'm so thankful to have you here. Um, she is writer, speakers, and entrepreneurs hire Malene, the shamanic songstress, to create infinite momentum because they feel disembodied, misunderstood, and alone. She helps them find clarity on their purpose. She uh, confidence in acting so that they are grand as they deliver their mi mission's message with passion and masterful precision to the world. Then they stand radiantly in life as on stage. She is a has a worldwide audience on her online radio show, Sacred Sound Surprises, and her podcast, Moving to Oneness. She has facilitated thousands to reconnect their wisdom, embody themselves fully, wake up to what is possible, and listen to their inner guidance. She is truly a remarkable individual, and I am so excited that she's here with me today, all the way from her home in Germany. So, Woo! <laughs> hello, hello, hello Colleen. I'm wonderful. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here. So I want you to tell us, for those of us that don't know you, Describe yourself. Who is Malene? What do you do and who are you? I like to laugh. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> it's important. I love my cats. Without my cats, I would not be doing what I'm doing. So you may even hear one or two walking around later or meowing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I see myself as a multifaceted. I, I'm connected strongly with plants. I love to paint. I was once a landscape architect, uh, uh, expressing myself through movement and art. I do that all day long. I, I paint on my walls. I create drawings for clients. Um, yeah, and uh, why is all of that? I think because I love seeing beauty so beauty in people in nature and that's what i also i think that's my biggest passion reawaken so we can see it in each other and my big hope that we all see the beauty of our planet and uh, change a few things to uplift for it. sure for sure so for those of us that um aren't familiar with being a shaman or a shamanic songtress a songtress Give us a little insight on what exactly that means and how you got into this modality. Ooh, uh, I think I was slowly moved into it, right? So first, because I have cerebral policy, I went into interest of the brain and the body. And then I started to finding ways to heal myself. I, did, I found rolfing or chiropractors or, or just exercise, yoga or whatever. All these things uh, brought me closer. And I always love to dance and move different than other people. And um, so then that brought me on really the study of shamanism at one point. And I was speaking about my cats and they they did it. Right? And so I learned shamanism because I needed to save a life um, for cats or for animals. And But then it was easy when I moved back from the U.S. to Germany uh, to meet other um, teachers and I was learning then uh, the wisdom of uh, shamanism and during that that was really interesting it, it during that course it was for a year uh, seven shamans from around the world with different specialties were invited there was the uh, grand shaman from uh, the northern hemisphere he is um, Inuit and he sings from the heart and I noticed, wow, he's singing. <laughs> and I love the way the tones came out and how they touched me. And then uh, it's really interesting. The other interesting person for me was um, a woman. She has passed on, though, now. She was the southern grandmaster uh, uh, from the Maori. And she was a channel. So bringing in a physical channel. And I was really interested of what that entails. And... Um, also, she was really good in, in really precisely predicting the future. And at that time, I didn't, even, you know, I was only painting. I never knew that my voice would carry me so far. 
And at that time, I was also rather silent and I didn't speak so much. And I uh, um, singing, I remember at that time, people uh, in school, my teacher let me miss the class because he didn't want me. I sang so bad <laughs> for two years. So that was a rare thing. And then doing now the singing, and I, it's a combination again in being enabling for me to really noticing that I always channeled beings physically so especially I learned that when I was dancing that when I danced I didn't limp and I could dance not knowing some guy out of Africa had to point it out oh my little you're dancing the goddess dances or uh, of our culture and or, or I was dancing in a woman that has passed on so it really got me to think and I really even all got quiet about that and then a few years later Suddenly the song came. It was out of the moment. Mm -hmm. Friend said, Oh my, and you're not in your body. And I said, and she took my hand, and another guy, I don't know where he even came from, took the other hand, and I started singing. I think I, I sang for half an hour. And so then as I got more courageous, I used it as a healing tool because people were telling me how they're reacting to it. And then now I know that was 2012. It is really a combination of creating the future, but also transmuting while singing and setting intention. Mm. And those songs are different. So I'm because I'm so open to many, it could be from Star Nations or I even sung, I was talking about um, Angangak. I have sung him and uh, many, many, many others. I don't know who I sing until I open my mouth. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. Well, you feel the energy and the people around you, and then you respond to that. So that's amazing. So let me ask you, 2020 was a difficult year for many, um, and still have many have concerns about what 2021 is going to bring. You clearly have a heart of service. So what would you tell someone who's struggling during this time? Um, this is the time, and this has been profited for uh, thousands of years. It is 2021, 2022. And it's going to go faster, though. It is really time to find out who you are. To sit back instead of going, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. Take a deep breath. If it's nice and warm where you go outside, touch a plant or, or an animal or another person, and just sense what. Have you always dreamt of? What do you love to do? And then also look backwards. What have you always been doing? Yeah, this is really important because in our life, it's not like college where you go to and suddenly you have a degree and yeah. then you can act on, on, on that profession. Yeah. When we recognize and remember who we are and all our gifts that we're living on a daily basis, we hone them. It's like a craft. So look back. What were you already doing? Or ask parents if you still have them. What were you doing when you were little? Or what did they say no to? Because they couldn't understand what you were doing at that time. Mm -hmm. So this is very important to take in your desires and say, what of all those desires am I not now living? Because this will give you answers you will act on your own intuition, create from your own intuition, and people react to it differently. It's like the, you said that before, right? They synchronize with it because it comes from your truth. There is love, passion, compassion, uh, yeah, the beauty, all encumbrances when you say, now is the time for me. And maybe don't yeah. even do too many things for others. Stop that for a while. Yeah. Well, I believe that. I believe that that's one of, you know, I know there's been a lot of hardships in this time, but there's been a lot of gifts too of that slowing down and just being present and being home and with family and all of that. And if we can really embrace the positivity of that um, rather than staying in the negative, um, I think a huge insights come to us in yeah. stillness. And, you know, using your hands, we have neglected. So all of us, especially now to be connected, we go on to the computer. Yeah, yeah because if many of us are alone now or you want to see your friends and yeah. how much can you sit alone? It depends if you live in a big city then or even in a small village. 
Right. Yeah. And um, so what, so that you come into your body as well. Yes, yeah, dancing. But what do you love to do also with your hands? And can you show that the world? Because it's also important as you discover yourself now, in a way also rediscovery, or you become more precise because you can utilize what you recognize to do in a quicker way, whatever you want to create. Mm -hmm. But doing the hands and, 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 and writing with a, with a pen again, painting, even the cooking, touch your food may be different. Um, if you can garden a little bit, really dig in there and, and plant. We need anyway more plants, as much plants yeah. <laughs> as possible plants. that need to be planted. Mm -hmm. uh, reconnect with, you know, seeds. Nature. This is will help you, I think, um, seeing your own worth. Because what can happen, you go, go a little bit into a depressive state, right? Mm -hmm. Because you have to find new answers. And then there's the financial pressure coming from the back. Right. And uh, that that normally uh, pushes down your creativity because mm -hmm. there's this urgent need. Mm -hmm. So if you can counterbalance that with anything that is in a, done physically, it will help you. Okay, that's great. That's great advice. I know that um, I often um, try to step away from the computer and I call it my afternoon appointment with sunshine. And I just kind of go out and just be out in the world and in, in a little bit of nature and, you know, get that vitamin D and, you know, all the greatness from the sun and what's around you. And it really, it really does put you at peace. So, oh, look at the kitty. <laughs> he's always, he, you know, he's one of these, I call him also my radio show. I have open doors yeah. in the middle of the show. Is it, oh, I have to let my cats in and. Yeah. Um, Puccini was always the one that if there was physical healing happening and I had Judy, she, she's not with us anymore, but th she would come in when star nations would arrive. She loved the high frequency or if there, whoever asked the question or demanded a sound where very high vibrating, she would come into the room. Wow, how fabulous. <laughs> So let me ask you this, um, now that I've been more open to healings and understand, um, cause it wasn't part of what I grew up with, um, this whole idea of, of, of healings and, and different modalities and everything like this. So what do you, how do you address people that are concerned because of their religious beliefs? They may be apprehensive or concerned that such a modality would be in conflict with their religious beliefs or, you know, some type of, you know, woo woo or rich witchcraft or something like that. How do you address people like that? Because not everybody is open to it. So I go back. I think we have to go back very, very far right? What is our natural state as a human being? How did we live 30, 40,000 years ago? There were no religions. And you can see it in still some tribal around the world, even here in Europe, you know, there's still uh, very many rituals that have survived for maybe, let's say, Christianity or, or the invasion of the Romans. And um, that, that are very connected to nature, to trees that celebrate using also nature. So I think it ha is, has always been a part of us. We should all look at our cultural rituals and where did they stem from? Where did they come from? So that is one thing where you can go back. What are we really celebrating? And then don't stop, you know, in the Renaissance or Middle Ages or the Rome, go further back. And look what was before we had all these borders and, and, and countries set up. Right. And then also energy flows always through our body. So when a mother touches a child because the child is crying or says it has pain somewhere, right? We put a hand on that child. In that moment, our love, our intention, everything pours right through there into that child. And it does start healing because a warmth is created and you know you can go into the science and particles uh, can go around and I think also another side is the science as I just mentioned is showing now that all what was considered once woo woo in a way science is catching up so why is science catching up because more people that are 
uh, interested in see what is really our natural way goes into mm -hmm. sciences and tries to discover it. And it comes. Um, and another part is many of our mm, uh, legacies, not legacies, um, legends are being also shown by science that they were true. Yeah. So, right. And so this is really fascinating through science. Suddenly you can find old places, old cities. Yeah, you can look under the water, you can look under the, the earth. So that should bring people to think, is it, oh my God, there is so much more. And what are we all automatically living? You know, we have certain movements that we all do. And, and why is that? What uh, do they bring yeah why do we cl close up tight when we are afraid yeah yeah and if well, you're I happy your body you. opens so we become observe how you yeah. react and the same is important for a good idea if the idea is true and it creates joy for you and you will have fun doing it notice what happens to your body so if you love it or you write a poem or you paint or you you have a good oh i'm going to make that workshop for example or online event workshop mm -hmm. if you open up wide and you can breathe different and you sit up different you'll notice it's the right thing right are you crunching together and you're tightening and there's a knot most of the time it's not for you to do now it may be later or you maybe to take a look is there a pattern? Have I always crunched if I wanted to do it? Why is that? You know, maybe you had a trauma or someone you um, said something and you have to say, how did I react? Maybe when you were a child to it. Yeah, so self-observation is a good way. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, what I've come to realize is that, you know, there's so much programming um, in us as a child and it's, it's not um, meant to be bad or anything else. It's just that our parents um, uh, raise us with what they know. And so we're raised with certain beliefs. And some of those things are like, why are those beliefs? You know, like you can start questioning some of this stuff. Like I never knew it was an option to be an entrepreneur. I mean, I thought you go out and you seek your eight to five job and you get married. And you, have, you know, why do we have to, to conform to that when we can be open and live our purpose, whatever that is. And if it's different than everybody else and it's not in the norm, it's okay. <laughs> so I love that. I love that. And I think that the more that you sit with stillness and really, you know, feeling how you feel and observing, like you said, whether you're crunching down or whether you're open to the, and, and, and experiment a little bit as to why question, why do yeah. I feel this way? And is it meant for me? Yeah, the question is a good one. So whenever we ask questions, what happens, your brain opens up. So one question leads to the next and it creates possibility. So as you were going back to, you know, your first question, really, for to support anyone who's, who's, who's trying to find a new way. So question anything. Every Why the why questions are really good and how does it, you know, how does it feel? How do I react to it? How did others react to it? Why is it easy for me? Why is it not so easy for me? Why do I love it? Why do I feel so great? Right. Why do I love that color? It's really all of that important. Yeah, no, that is amazing. So I'm going to ask you a fun question now. Okay. So I want to know, what is your favorite part about living in Germany? Tell me. Tell me what it is. I know you're from there and you lived in the States for a while, but what's your favorite part for those of us that haven't experienced European countries or Germany? What, what is it that you love about your country? I love all the markets, <laughs> getting the fresh fruit and that you have so many ways to buy um, food that is still made uh, by small craftsmen or uh -huh. small farmers, right? And um, transportation, <laughs> I remember that because now I had the little child. So my with six, he was able to walk to school. A uh, little older, they took the bus to school. They couldn't go to cities. So it creates freedom. And because I'm a freedom lover, I think this mobility of uh, 
being able to move from A to C, B or C really quickly. Uh, I love a lot. And I think what influenced me, what I like, is the green. Because for me, wherever I lived, in even other countries, uh, and it's still where it pulls me, draws me to, is there has to be green if I want to stay there for longer. So it can be at the ocean, but it has to be at the ocean where there's also a rich green or trees because yeah. I'm so connected. I love the desert, but then it's more a vacation or go to a journey. Um, yeah, and here where I now ended up, it's not where I'm born, but there's the combination. You have many beautiful trees on top of an ancient coral. So this has, and I love ancient wisdom. I connect so often to what was here that still feeds us. So the coral that has, petri I think, petrified, uh -huh. right? Yeah. I can feel it. I can, I can sense and I can feel the ocean. And yeah, so we have this all over. So we walk on this limestone. Sounds beautiful. I can't wait to visit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> everyone I always have an open door oh great great I'm going to take you up on that so thank you so much for being with me today sharing what you do you truly are an extraordinary woman thank um, you, Colleen. you if any of my audience would like a free discovery call with me to see how I lead clients to live their best life or are interested in being featured on one of my interviews you can reach me at Colleen at ColleenRecords.com all of the contact info for both myself and Maline will be provided below. And just thank you so much. I am so honored to have you as my guest today, Maline. Oh, so this was a beautiful you. conversation. And I hope many of your uh, listeners and your audience find the truth deep within themselves. And the energies, I have to tell everyone really quick, yeah. the energies are here now to support you. So you're not alone. You're never alone. And you will find people, educate people of how you love to be and how you love to speak and what you love to do. And it will all come automatically. Oh, I love that. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Colleen.